I'm really a bad teacher. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I I do workshop. I do give workshops sometimes or I host workshops. Yeah. But for me, uh, I I like I like it and the people like it as well. At least that's <laughs> what I uh, that's what I hear. But it's it's not that I have to. I I don't feel like I have a lot to learn uh, to teach them. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. It's more providing the, the space, yeah. the material, the time. Yeah, yeah. And to actually do it. Yeah, then, then, then saying what, sh what they should do how or to, how yeah. to. Because actually many people, or most of the people can draw. Because it doesn't matter if you... Uh, on what level you, uh, you start. When you have... When you put your attention in it and, and, you, and some focus. Most of the time people go home with lovely results. Mm. So, um, and of course I can do some uh, exercises uh, or give them some, some tips, but most of the time we uh, start with doing exercises like uh, don't um, lift your pen from the paper. Yeah, the one line drawing. Yeah. I like that one a lot. It helps. <laughs> it helps to come uh, come out of, yeah, to, to exit the comfort zone and to, uh, to just start feeling. To let go of perfection. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're not only a painter, you're also an illustrator and a textile designer. And um, to me, the fact that you do such a multidisciplinary work in a successful way gives me so much hope. Oh yeah! <laughs> I think um, we are we are often told that um, we need to focus on one specific thing in order to become successful. Hmm. And you are living proof that this is not necessary. That you can do multiple things in a successful way. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you if you could share some advice and tips for for me and for all the people watching who have. <laughs> who struggle with um, creating a successful art business with multiple different things to do because often artists have multiple passions. Mm. How did you know what to focus on in the first place? It's lovely that you see it like this. <laughs> For me it feels a bit different of course because I'm just uh, another artist struggling and well not struggling just finding ways to express uh, herself. For me it also has been, uh, you know, a search. So uh, after uh, Art Academy I, I um, had maybe one or two years of making uh, fine art, but then I, I, I just didn't know I, what to do and how to focus on, what, to, on, on the, what kind of material or what kind of work I wanted to make. Yeah. So I um, I also just chose to uh, focus on drawing because this was something I could do just easily and all, uh, drawing was something I did for ages so uh, this I thought um, okay if I don't know what kind of fine art I want to make if it has to be so difficult all the time then I just now I just want to focus on drawing and uh, and the best way to do that is uh, for as being and uh, in being an uh, illustrator. So uh, it was not like all that clear in my head, mm. uh, but yeah, the the choices I made just developed in that direction. And I lived in Amsterdam by then, and uh, I worked in a or I had some contacts in a shop where I sometimes worked, and I knew the owners and. A lot of um, magazine makers also visited that shop, so it was mm -hmm. really the perfect combination of uh, uh, making contact in an easy way. Yeah, um, it was a good place to be. Then. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, that w that really helped for me. And um, so the first goal for me was yeah to have one of my drawings published in a magazine, of course. Do you have? Um, um, feel the urge to draw uh, images sometimes also? I do, yeah. Yeah? I do. But then I feel like I'm 
I'm getting too impatient mm. with uh, real stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then when I yeah, then the the problem with my um, controlling and perfection. Um, yeah, the, the part of me that likes to control and have um, kind of a perfect result yeah. um, is giving me a lot of trouble while um, trying to paint something that is realistic. Yeah. Because then, then I, I notice all the mistakes I make. Yeah. <laughs> Just like I was telling you now. Oh no, yeah. I should oh, have done it. No, it's not. Oh, I already uh, fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's that's the freedom I find in uh, in abstract painting is that I don't have. Yeah. That's... That much uh, negative thoughts. With yeah. It. Yeah. I can imagine. But, but I, I I I love to do. Um, Portraits. Oh yeah. Actually, I'm yeah. not very good at it, so I'm, I, I I would never try to portray uh, uh, someone um, realistically yeah. anymore because no. I think I'm not good enough at it. But I really like to, um, yeah, especially women, the faces of women. I did that a lot when I was a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. And I miss it sometimes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so f so uh, by then it was still like a big goal because I I wasn't uh, I didn't do any illustrational um, uh, study uh, and I knew that the people in the academy that did that they really had a di uh, hard time in their uh, studies because it's a very it's a harsh. Uh, mm. uh, Study and I didn't do that, so it felt also a little bit weird to uh, say I'm an illustrator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, I, it, I could also take it seriously because I knew that drawing was almost uh, like breathing for me. So um, yeah, and I don't. I think that just developed, and then from drawing, I um, um, developed for, to uh, doing silk screen printing my drawings on fabrics that I found on the Dapper Markt in Amsterdam and then then I made uh, lamps and scarves uh. from it so it was a bit of a mix you know but still it was mainly uh, illustrational focused uh, and then I started to make my own series of postcards and uh, sell them to little uh, shops in the, in Amsterdam and then also that grew to other cities and um, so that went well, but I always felt, uh, yeah, I'm actually more, I felt more like a, an artist that wants to make, um, yeah, free work actually. So it was never like, okay, now I'm an artist, now I'm an illustrator and now I, no, it just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. went from one thing So you thing started to out with drawing. Yeah. The drawings developed into paintings. Yeah. And where does the textile come from? When I did the transition to painting, when I, like, I think six, seven years ago, I felt like oh, I, I, that I wanted to see what uh, textile would do to my painting. So mm -hmm. what, what an image of me would, yeah, what, what would happen when I would translate it to textiles. Yeah, this one is one from last summer. It's a, a translation of a painting and it's actually pretty much one-on-one. -on -one. So the color was also, in the painting was also uh, warm red, stone red. And the painting, the, 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 yeah, the drawing or the, the image was also uh, pretty much similar to this. Um, and when we started weaving, I first thought uh, to do it in wool and in uh, like very warm and fluffy materials, but it didn't work. It became too, uh, I don't know, it just didn't work. And uh, then um, Milou, the de developer, she said, maybe we can use uh, linen. Um, and and it, uh, it actually really works very well because it became, um, linen is much thinner and it became, 
a bit similar to the old work and I somehow in this piece it just worked to have it quite similar. In another piece like four years ago it, it was actually better to let the, uh, the original image go in my head and see if we could make a new work but for this one it was better to uh, I don't know it just developed into a textile translation of the original painting mm. and now you see it framed but I actually rather have it not framed because this this was just a tryout to see if it works but I think it's um, well maybe my husband said it's actually nice because then you think it's a painting and you come closer and then there's there's this these yarns mm -hmm. doing their own thing but uh, I I like it hanging loose because it has more um, fragile fragility mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. it. And this is the swarm and these are actually the tests. So these are the tests of last summer. So then you start weaving and then uh, here is a little um, nutmeg color in it and then you think oh no, no let's try a bit more, a bit more gray or a bit more yeah, this was a bit too dark for my taste, so then we tried a bit more white, but then, yeah, I didn't like the, the contrast, and then we tried a bit more uh, mohair in it, so the black mohair, which makes it a bit more mm. uh, contrasted, so then you start test, 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 <laughs> testing. Oh, so, the, so these are all the tests stacked yeah. up on each other. Yeah, exactly, you, you just uh, uh, weave until you think okay this test is the one I want and then uh, but for now I really liked actually these these two tests so I decided to frame them and also I kept a little piece of the uh, there was I cut off a piece like this so I have it in my own uh, um, hmm. archive <laughs> so, but this yeah this is a bit wobbly Text, yeah, uh, you mm. see, in e every binding there's a different uh, stretch as yeah. well. So mm -hmm. in this one you can really see that very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the new weaving will be a bit, uh, I think, mostly like this. So, but more m with mohair also. So it it's a bit more. Dense and woolly. Mm. Yeah. Do you do you change brushes a lot? Mm, no, most of the time I only use two or three. Or uh, so for the stems I use a thicker one, and then for the for the details, for the details I often switch. Yeah. Mm. 